quick review of the of the week, and I'll just talk a little bit about um, review what we talked about um, fossil fuels. And uh, so I want to go on to this idea here of all the different types of forms of fossil fuels. Here's a hydrocarbon, it's just carbons with hydrogens on them. And uh, they can be in this linear form, or they can be kind of branched, which makes them bald up like this. And we talked about how when they are this way, uh, they have a higher vapor pressure, and they and uh, and they typically uh, 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 melt at a at a at a lower. They melt more easily. And uh, we also talked about alcohols, which look like hydrocarbons with OHs hung off them, and it can be multiple OHs hung off them. And uh, sugars look like. Uh, look like uh, hydrocarbons uh, with OHs, and one of the carbons that doesn't have an OH has a double bond to an oxygen, so here's, here's glucose. Um, if, uh, if it happens that a, an, a, that a hydrocarbon that's got a carbon double bonded to an oxygen and the same carbon has got an OH, then that gets a different name. It's called, it's called, a, uh, it's called an acid or carboxylic acid. Um, one way of designating the formula on this is we s this part is the COOH. That's this part of the formula. And, uh, and if you uh, look across here and count all the number of carbons and hydrogens, you find that there are 10 carbons and 19 hydrogens off here. And uh, so, that, that's, uh, so that's decanoic acid. Um, if it happens that instead of a hydrogen off that, instead of that OH there, it's an O and then leads to another carbon, then uh, that's our last category. It's, it's called an ester, which is also the same stuff that makes flowers smell sweet. So uh, how do we extract fossil fuels from the ground? Uh, we've talked about how there's sort of the old-fashioned underground method. Uh, there's a sort of a highly mechanized underground method in these mountaintop methods for, for coal mining. Um, for oil recovery, it's, a, it's, a, it's evolved quite a lot, but, um, but uh, the idea is that oil gets trapped as it's sort of trying to make its way up through the subsurface, gets trapped by some impermeable cap rock, and if you drill into that, then you can get to that. And uh, this is showing an enhanced oil recovery where uh, gases, in this case CO2, is being pumped into that, uh, that, that rock to, to try to displace some of the oil. Fracking is a, is a, is, is a technique that's being used um, in when the rock that has the uh, hydrocarbons is shale, which for the hydrocarbons, neither oil, just, they, just, they don't go through the shale very easily. But if you put this cocktail of, 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 of liquid in there, um, then uh, it, it, it cracks it, and that allows it puts these fissures in and allows the um, hydrocarbons to flow through. And uh, finally, uh, oh, almost finally, we, how do we refine the oil that we get out of the ground? Just want to draw your attention to this distillation column that's, uh, that's on this great big uh, refinery. And here's a schematic of it. So the crude oil comes in here, gets heated up. And what happens in these columns is the more volatile components like methane, ethane, uh, rise higher. And so if you want to extract those, then you would pull off those gases from the top of the column. If you want to get things like octane or in that range, you would pull it off uh, lower and lower and lower until you get the really heavy things that come off uh, the bottom. And, uh, and the other thing to uh, just note about this is that if you, if you want, say, more octane, but what you have a lot of is these longer hydrocarbons, is that you can pull them off at this level and do what's called cracking, which breaks it up into smaller pieces, and then, uh, then that allows you to uh, basically get more uh, of the high-priced uh, components out of it, which is things like octane. Finally, then, we've got how do we make electricity from burning fossil fuels or anything else. Uh, here's a schematic of a, of a power plant. And uh, recall that there's the one circuit here, which is the, the, the water that's used to uh, basically turn the turbines. And then it gets uh, condensed back here, comes in as liquid, reboiled, runs turbines, and so forth. And then there's another system, which is the, uh, the part that cools that, that water as it's going back into the boiler. And that's the uh, that's a condenser system. Often this is a lake or a, or an ocean, 
and so two, two, two water systems. But I also just wanted to draw your attention to what makes the, the, the water in the boil boil in the first place. Well, it could be burning uh, coal or gas or oil. Uh, you could have nuclear uh, reactions going on that, that release heat. You could have a solar energy uh, array like this. In this case, this is in Seville, Spain. These are individual mirrors that are all pointing uh, the sun's rays at this, at this uh, central location. In this case, there's one more step because what happens is that the, all this energy goes in here and it melts some, probably some salts, and then the salts get, um, the molten salts uh, end up uh, um, uh, heating up the water in the boiler. And that is it.